So today, we have not been in the lecture hall of the universities, but today, we are going to look like one. In Jesus' name. So church, in the name of Jesus, shall we welcome Reverend Courage Banser. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for a wonderful day like this. That God has given me the opportunity to be with you this day. Today is my third time of worshiping with Unique Salvation. I think about 10 or more years ago, I was with you at somewhere, Lewisham. Okay. And then I came about two weeks ago. Praise the Lord. Let me first begin by giving thanks to God for this fellowship. The hand of the Lord is upon you. More than 10 years ago, when I visited you, I still find the same faces here. It's not easy to maintain membership, especially in this part of our world. And so I thank God for the ministry. And I thank God for all the people who make it possible for worship to go on every Sunday and any other day in this sanctuary. Again, let me thank um, my daddy, uh, Reverend Palm, for the gift that God has given him, that he's using that to bless the people of God. More than 20 years of my ministry as a dean minister, if there's one thing that I know and I'm sure of is that pastors don't let go easily of their pulpit. Hallelujah. Yes. Because that's your authority. Blessing can come from here. Grace can come. But poison can also come. So you, you, don't, you don't easily ask people to share your pulpit. And so I was so glad and also surprised that he asked me to share his pulpit today. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord will use this moment to bless somebody's life and bring courage and bring life. I also want to thank Sofu Mami. Um, you know, Prisca had been with you for some time, and you know the difficulties. And this fellowship has given me that assurance that even when I'm away, my wife is being taken care of. Hallelujah. And Sister Constance, and Brother Gabriel, and my dear sister. I even spoke with mommy when you were at the hospital, right? Um, it gets to a point, as the Bible says, that in times of trouble, a friend who is closer than to you is better than a brother or sister who is far away. And that is what you have demonstrated. And I pray that the Lord will continue to enlarge him the ministry of unique salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is a very wonderful day. And this is the day the Lord has made. And we need to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what your challenges are. Can't tell what you are going through. 
the battles you are fighting. What you are fighting is different from what I am fighting. But whatever the circumstance is, this day, the Lord is telling you, it is over. And you are blessed. You don't come to the presence of the Lord with heavy heart and go back the same. Once you are in the presence of the Lord, be assured that the Lord is visiting you even right now. The power, the vim in worship that we have experienced a couple of minutes ago is a demonstration of the fact that the presence of the Lord is overwhelming. When the praise and worship team was laid in and I could see them jumping, they, they could not even stand on their feet. And I could see the keyboardist playing with that passion. And then the drama that you can see that the Holy Spirit is here. And we thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll be blessed today. I pray that you live here with a testimony. I pray that every storm that is brewing, that is scaring you, the Lord will say to them, peace be still. And you will come here and give testimony. That is the essence. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of God visits, things change. Things can never be the same. And so I pray that you will experience the overwhelming love and the presence of God. Hallelujah. Today I want to share with us our calling in the Lord. To remind all of us as followers of Christ, as servants of Christ, we have been called to serve. Service in the house of the Lord. And I want to read two passages. The first one is from Luke 22. Luke 22, I want to read from 24 to 26. Luke 22, 24 to 26. Luke 22, 24 to 26. Now, let me give you the background. This happened at the Last Supper. When the hour had come that the Son of Man be betrayed and also be handed over to the chief priest and whilst he faced the cross, he organized a banquet, what we call the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist or whatever communion we call it today. So, he dined with the disciples. And in course of that dinner, when the Lord is actually in a state of agony, and even the disciples themselves do not know what lies ahead of them. In the midst of that, Something happened. There was also a rivalry among them. And them here, we are talking about the disciples. Concerning which of them was to be counted the greatest. Hmm? This time, your master is having trouble. He himself, he doesn't know what lies ahead. He's worried. He had already told you that one of you is even going to betray me. I'm going to be handed over to the chief priest. 
should this be the time for the disciples to be struggling about who is the greatest. He said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. So the Lord looked at them and said, you are talking like you are in the world. In the world, people who have power and authority and money, that is how they behave. And even when they abuse people, they still call them benefactors. They still call them boss. Your boss will come home and say, you are a foolish guy. You say, yes, sir. Hallelujah. But you are not so. Instead, let him who is greatest among you be as younger and he who rules as he who serves. Hallelujah. It's interesting. We are called to serve. We are not called to lord it over people. We are not called to hold titles. We are not called to show power and authority. We are called to be as young as children. Now elsewhere, in Luke chapter 9, similar thing happened. And even the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, including even their mother had to come in struggling who is the greatest. Praise the Lord. So Jesus looked at them. said that is the way worldly people behave. It should not be said among you. That is not us. People called by the name of Christ. Today, when we are talking about calling, we think you want to bear the title reverend. So, if you don't bear the title reverend, you are not called. So, once it's about calling, it's for some group of people. Then, you are not a child of Christ. If you are called by the name of Christ, if you are witnessing Christ, if you are a servant of Christ, then you are called. You are called for ministry. You are called for a purpose. And that purpose is from God. So the Lord looked at them and laughed and said, stop behaving like the Gentiles. Greatness is in humility. So, let me jump to Paul and then I will come back to the disciples. Then, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this is what Paul says. Let a man so regard us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Hallelujah. It is required in a steward that a man or a woman be found faithful. So, I did my own mathematics. As pastor said, it's not a lecture theater. So, so I said, when we are called, what should be the success of our ministry? How should people measure our success in our calling, in our service to God, in our service to humanity? How should we be measured? 
Now, as for the world, they have given us standard. The world defines who is a successful person. Now, when I am in need, I need money, I know who to call, right? Yeah, you should know who to call. The person who you know has money to give you, that's who I will call. I won't call somebody I'm richer than. Hallelujah. So, so the world has already given the standard that when you are in a certain position, you should be seen, you should be known. That is the standard of the world. Now Paul is saying that the standard of God is that a successful steward of Christ, a servant of Christ must be faithful. Hallelujah. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness I define in very simple terms, as Bible puts it, your yes be yes, and your no, no. When people can count on you, when they mention your name, they will say that, yes, this is how I know him. I can count on him. I can bet. I can, in fact, I can put my life on the line for him. Because you value and cherish the things of God. Successful people are people who value and cherish things of God. You can, you can, you can, God can give you every form of protection. But. If you don't value things of God, you don't see the grace of God in your life. When I went to the seminary, you know, those days when we were going to the seminary, our mind was like, we just go and read the Bible and then go away. So we got there. I mean, Legon Trinity and we went to class and philosophy this, that, that, that. I said, what is happening here? And the kind of things the professors were even saying is like, are we at the right place? You know, challenging the divinity of Jesus, whether Mary was really a virgin, you know, you get to class, they bombard you with all kinds of... So I it got to a time, I, I asked myself, well, are we sure we are at the right place? So, one day, one of our professors, I mean, he became Methodist um, presiding bishop and um, National Council of uh, Peace Council chairman, Asante, Professor Asante. So, like Nicodemus, I went to him quietly in the night, in the evening. I said, Prof, I'm enjoying your class. Jesus the Christ. That is the, the cause. But I'm getting confused. Is everything? Are you sure you are telling us the truth or there's something that we don't know? So he looked at me and said, Aqua is like that kind of person. You know something? We have nothing to hide from you. What we know about Jesus is what we are teaching you. And what we know is that he is the son of God. And he has come to serve. And he has called us to service. You see, when I come to teach you in the class, it's the same as being in the church. Being a pastor. Some of my colleagues are in the church as pastors. We are in the academia. It's all call to service. Call to serve. So we, we had a couple of moments. He said, you'll be fine. You are just in the first year. You'll be fine. Now down the line, I realized that everything in the scriptures 
everything in our Christian life, they all come down to service to God, service to humanity. When you are home, you have service to render. It, it doesn't end in the church. And so, wherever we see ourselves, it's a call to serve. And, and that is what Jesus is saying. That you don't make yourself like Gentiles who feel so big in their shoes when others serve them. Following that, he himself washed the feet of the disciples. So he asked them, did you understand what I just did? And they said, yes. But he said, you have to do what I did to you. You have to serve others. When we come to the house of God, let service be our motive. Let it be our motivation. If for no reason, come to church because you want to come and serve. If for no reason, let the motivation be that I want to be in the house of the Lord and do what? And serve. So, these very disciples, after all this, when the Lord had gone through it all and left, what happened? They are the very people who carry on with what? The gospel. Now, the Lord had revealed to them that servanthood is not a matter of greatness in the sense of the world. But it's about mission. It's about service. So now, they came together. What shall we do to take the gospel further? Preaching is a very good thing. Sharing the word of God with people is a very good thing. That is the only way that people can hear the gospel of the Lord. And it is service to God. Beloved, let's look around us today. In the church. In our homes. And ask ourselves. How do we feel when people don't give us the kind of honor, respect, the place we want them to put us. When we don't receive it, how do we feel about it? We feel so bad. Sometimes you walk into an office, it's better here, especially in Ghana, and the secretary will be she will look from top to down, and you ask yourself, is there anything wrong about my dressing or something? <laughs> Hallelujah. What that is pushing society to do is that everybody wants to look good and great in the sight of people to get respect. So, so that is the only way. So I walked to the office. I said, my name is Reverend Canon Dr. Confidence Wolanyo Bansa, lecturer, academic senior member, University of Cape Coast. Then, mm -hmm, immediately, why should the world be like that? Should we get to that point when the Lord is teaching us that if you want to be great, be the least among them. Whether in the church, whether in the home, whether at our places of work, in the society, wherever we find ourselves, we have to be as little as those children that the Lord recommended us to be. That is the only way we can be successful in our service to Christ. Beloved, 
let's not follow the world. The world has defined our path. Let's not follow that one. No. Let's not follow it. Let's be different. Let's be completely different from the world. That is how the world wants us to be. Arrogant. Disrespectful. Lawlessness. Pride. Anger. That is the path the world is giving us to follow. Why should we fall victim to that? I was in Manchester recently. So already the appointment was booked. So I got there. The lady asked me, what's your name? I was even surprised. I said, confidence. I, no, confidence? Are you sure? I said, yes, confidence. Is it the same person, Reverend Doctor? And I said, it's the same person. You are seeing confidence. And I said, my name is confidence. You are again, you want to confirm with the title. That is the world. Beloved, we are called to serve. Service in humility. Service to God. And you know why? There is blessing in service to God. Hallelujah. You see, wherever you are, they will see you. They will see you. And that is the blessing. He said, when you go to the dinner you are invited to, don't go and sit by the front pew. Even though you are prominent, sit at the back. And when the owner of the place comes, he will invite you to come to the front. There is blessing in serving the Lord. There's so much that we cannot, we ourselves, we are not even aware of what the Lord is doing for you. You, you have no idea. You, because there are not things you can see with your eyes. When we are talking about spiritual things, they are different from worldly things. Those you can see with your eyes, that's what you think God is doing for you. Those you cannot see, you just can't see them. Day and night, angels are guiding you. Day and night, angels are clearing the path for you. Do you know where the favor of the Lord is coming from? You have no idea. Do you know at the time the enemy is right before you? You can't see it. Somebody clears the enemy away. That is the blessing of God. You have no idea. The battle that is being fought on your behalf. As you are seated here, somebody is defending you somewhere. By the time they put the trap there for you, somebody clears it. You will not fall into that snare. That is the blessing in serving the Lord. We don't take God for a joke. When we are serving God, let's serve God with our heart. With all that is in us, with the breath that we have, let's serve God with that. Not expecting reward from human beings. When you are serving and you are expecting, already you have written down what you will get. You are a failure already from the start. And that is why most of us, we are easily disappointed. Because our expectations are not met. We think that when I do this, I must get this. Serve God, not as to man, but as to God. Today, 
my message for all of us is that when we are called, we are called as children of Christ. We are called as servants of Christ. We are called as people who have been tagged with Christ. So, we do what he, he, what he says. We are like slaves. Some years, 400 plus years ago, when slaves were captured and they were in chains, in the ship. Do they have any freedom? No. What the captain says is what you have to do. Jesus should be the captain of your life. Jesus should be what? The captain of your life. You do what he says. You follow where he leads. Whatever he commands you to do is what you do. And you will see the blessing. Because he is a righteous God. He is a loving God. He is the one who will lead us into all truth and all joy. I pray that we will celebrate the goodness of the Lord this day. I pray that we shall also commit ourselves to the service of God. I pray that the Lord will bless us in so many ways, even as we continue to serve in the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Just reflect on this message at this moment. ask questions yourself. How do I serve the Lord? What is my service to the Lord Jesus Christ? And ask yourself whether Jesus is the captain of your life. What he says is what you will do. Where he leads is where you will go. Is Jesus that captain of your life? Pray for the Lord. To give you the opportunity to serve him and be faithful to him. You pray that the success of your service should be faithfulness. Faithfulness to God, faithfulness to your fellow human beings.
we pray for your children. We pray that your spirit descend on us. Lord, let's have a share of your spirit right now. Let's have a share of your spirit. Give her the spirit of humility. Lord, that we can also serve you in truth and in spirit and in all humility. Lord, we pray for opportunity to serve you. Serve you in the house of the Lord. Serve you in the community. Serve you in our homes. Serve you in our families. Lord, we pray that we will serve you even at our places of work. May your spirit overwhelm us. We pray all this. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. We give the glory and thanks to the Messiah God for such rich commandments that have been given unto us it is required that a servant is seemed faithful faithful if we have forgotten everything at all let us remember those that he has taught us today and this is how we are going to remember Reverend Dr. Bansa. Hallelujah. And we wish he could have stayed a bit longer. Hallelujah. But we thank God. So we say, Reverend, may God bless you. And may the Almighty God give you the strength and the courage to continue with the work that he has entrusted in you. In the same way, we thank God for your family and we thank God for every dream and vision that you have that it shall lead to your celebration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give the glory and thanks unto the Most High God.